Is everything okay? Great. So we're very happy to have Simon Wang talk to us about classification of smooth actions by higher rank bodices of critical dimensions. So thank you. Thank you. It's a great pleasure and honor to give this talk here. And uh, so, so let's let me mention this is a joint work with uh, Aaron Brown and uh, Federico Hertz. The question is uh, about higher rank lattices. And uh, to be simple, let's just talk to this lattice. This is a lattice in the D group SRNR. Means that this is discrete and it has finite co volume. When you take the quotient, it becomes uh, an orbifold of finite volume. It's just an orbifold, it's not compact, it may have a cusp, but the, the volume with respect to the higher measure on this group is finite. Okay, then um, let's just have some appetizers. We can ask what are the representations, let's say finite dimension representations of SRNR. You can classify them. So these can be classified. Okay. But what are the representations of SLNZ? So, so there's a countable list. If you open a book of representation, sorry, a standard list of representations of SLNR. Uh, but for representations of SLNZ, there is a dichotomy. The bad example is SL2Z. So SL2Z, when let's look at the uh, n equals two case, um, SL2Z has too many, too many representations compared to SL2R. Uh, maybe many more representations than many more representations than <laughs> SL and R. So, are you only considering finite dimensional? Uh, finite dimensional, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, when, when for, for yeah, infinite dimensional, then they are yes, a whole whole theory about that. Let's let's say finite dimensional. Yes, finite dimensional. Um, also, I mean, when you, like, when you say the quotient is an, uh, is an orbifold, is it actually non-singular because the, uh, you have a uh, you have You have cusps and you have these angle, angles. Well, so. that would be downstairs. If you're, you're drawing the picture down in the, in the plane, but you're passing up to the frame bundle. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, you're yeah, right. Yeah. You don't, you don't see your full points. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right, sorry, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, okay. yes, thank you. It's a manifold of, yeah. Okay. Um, then, uh, okay, this is because um, SL2Z is essentially, this is, this is essentially a free group. Uh, by this I mean it has a finite index, has a finite index. Free group. Then say this is, uh, what's this, F, F2 of two generators. Now of course you can take, take any, Two matrices A, B, A and B, and you will have a representation of of, of the free group. Then you do some something some simple things. You will get a representation of SL two Z. So representations of SL two Z are quite arbitrary. 
But it turns out that once you go beyond n equals two, then the situation is completely different. So for n greater than equal to three, this is Margulis super rigidity theorem. This is not the case. Margulis super rigidity tells us that they said SL3Z representations come from those of SL3R. Okay, up to some, then um, come from, the, uh, uh, okay, up to some twists. Um, if they are, uh, if uh, unbounded, if up to finite, finite index of a group, and uh, bounded representations. So representations of a bounded image. Uh, up to just by, by these two things, then, then okay, they, are, they, they, they can be classified. And they are classification of these. So all the representations of SR3Z are essentially of algebraic nature and can be classified. There are not so many of them. And the general theory is instead of SR3Z in general, in general, this holds for gamma a lattice inside G, where G is a semi-simple Lie group of real rank greater than or equal to two. The real rank of SLNZ is, so the real, uh, SL, the real rank of SLNR is, the rank is M minus one. So for when, once you go beyond N equals three, the rank is at least two. And gamma is irreducible lattice. Uh, essentially this says you don't want to exclude uh, things of this type. Gamma 1 cross gamma 2 setting inside G1 cross G2. Where gamma 1 is in G1 and gamma 2 is in G2. So that's uh, the, the product type of lattice are, are, are not allowed. And once these two conditions are satisfied, then something like that would, would hold. So such lattices do not have many, many representations. Then one analog, not one analog, one extension, is Zimmer's Kosako super Could you just explain the thing a little bit more? So you're saying that representations of lattice come from representations of the group except the supervisor. So yeah, the, the, the correct statement is that every, okay, uh, every representation whose image is a risky dense and unbounded is a restriction of the representation of G. Yeah. Thank you. Um, the uh, the Zarsky, uh, Kosaku, uh, sorry, the Zimmer, Kosako super is uh, instead of considering a representation A representation is something like this as a representation. Right? You, if you take a vector v and apply rho of gamma two and apply rho of gamma one, which are two matrices, and you get rho of gamma one, gamma two times v, something satisfying this condition is called a representation. Then if you uh, ask this uh, matrix to depend not only uh, to, to be not absolutely defined, but also depend on some base point, and then it's called a co-cycle. So a co-cycle, uh, okay. consider a co-cycle, which is over a group action gamma acting on X, 
and matrices of this form, which depend its row of element from gamma, element from x, so that the equation above is replaced by the following uh, condition. Let's put a B here. Then this is called a co-cycle, a matrix value of the co-cycle. And the most co-cycle structure did this is if uh, gamma preserves a probability measure, X, let's call it mu, then uh, okay, and and the row is a cocycle defined over mu. Meaning that this relation holds for almost every X. Then Okay, rho can be linearized to become a representation of G. Still up to some defects. Can you say something about how such two cycles arise in real life? Very good question. The the most important one that we are going to consider is when gamma has a smooth action and the co-cycle is a derivative. The co-cycle is just, uh, when we have an action, rho, gamma, acting on x, we just consider the derivative of x at x of, uh, of alpha of gamma, when alpha is smooth action. That, that's, that's the one that we are interested in. Yeah. And so this is that the tangent? Yeah, the yes. And, and now you can see that the, the dimension now starts to matter. For example, SL3R, the smallest representation, so yes, uh, small, smallest non-trivial representation happens in three dimensions. So to clarify, when you say you have a co cycle, then for every X you have such an action, so it might be Yes, uh, it can be linearized, uh, yes, uh, to become uh, in, in, you almost have a way. So, so, okay, the, the, the correct way of writing it is rho gamma x is equal to some rho zero of, of gamma, where this is the representation of g. Then there are, uh, re, so this is hx inverse, then here it's h gamma x, uh, then for mu almost every x. This is what I meant. And this, this linearization depends at, uh, on the point. So the, the, the initial point and the target point. So I mean, is, it, is it the correct picture to think that you have actually an action of a vector, there's a vector bundle over there? Yeah, you have vector, exactly. And then you have an action on the fiber. Yes. And then you can, you can uh, parameterize the, the charts, the, 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 the fibers, so that it's exactly uh, a representation. Right. Now you can see that, as uh, as you asked, the, the most important one is the, the, the uh, derivative cycle. And for example, if we look at SLNR, the smallest possible dimension for a non-trivial representation is in dimension n. Then it's worth to ask, for example, if when in dimension n minus one, which is less than the lowest possible representation dimension, can still have uh, produce such such uh, uh, derivative cycles, or can produce a, a, a smooth action. Okay. That is a question of Zimmer.
demo program asks the following question. Instead of a representation into GLDR, the, the group of matrices, how about representations into the different morphism group? Representation of gamma into the different morphism group of a manifold, of a compact manifold. That is the same as saying group actions are a manifold. So, I, so classify by smooth group actions. Okay. So this is, this is a huge program, and I believe that the wave has just started, and there has been some recent progress. Um, and the hope, the hope is say, to say that, like here, there are not so many of them. And all the, all, all the smooth actions like this, they, you can classify them, and they are of algebraic nature. It turns out that this is not 100% true. There are some exceptions. Maybe before telling you uh, that maybe I will, okay, let, let, let me tell you uh, some uh, examples. The hope is that, uh, so there, there are two basic classes of examples, both of which are, are algebraic. And yes, gamma, uh, the, the, the morphism of uh, uh, gamma embeds into the automorphism group of some lambda, and G embeds into the automorphism group of, uh, no, not embedding, just the morphism group of M, where lambda is a lattice inside M, and M is a neopotent Lie group. This will give an action by gamma on the quotient m mod lambda. And inside the, uh, okay, simply connected, simply connected, neopotent Lie group. And inside the simply connected Lie group, every, uh, every lattice is co-compact, so this quotient is, is a manifold. And this will produce an action, smooth action, uh, action linear action by gamma on the, on, on the manifold, on the neo manifold. That's one kind of example. The other kind of example is even simpler. It's gamma. Uh, let's say it's a, the, the morphism of uh, into H. Let's say has a morphism, and uh, H has a Lie group. There's a Lie group, and the lambda is a lattice in H. Then you just let gamma. Then gamma act on H more lambda by left translations. Of beta, let's say beta gamma. Okay. So both these two classes of actions are of algebraic nature. Sorry, why is it the I mean, maybe you're thinking of special classes in the groups, because it looks like case one is a special, is a subclass of the class. No, no, no. What's the difference? Uh, the difference is that's automorphisms. So, okay, oh. I, I should say that, okay, the example for this is uh, SLNZ acting on TN, which is RM or ZN. Now, this is N and this is lambda. So, so it, it's not only acting on, 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 the, on the vector scale, it's also just in the, the fundamental group. Yeah. Um, okay. So, now, uh, for simplicity, let me stick to SLNR, but things are also known for, for some cases of some other groups. Let me stick to SLNR and SLNZ. So from, from now on, S will, gamma will be SLNZ. Okay. Oh, oh, as a lattice, uh, anyway, gamma is G is SLNR. Uh, so the dimension is up to M minus two, this is a recent proof. <laughs> 
Five brown fish and cajado. Of Zimmer's conductor. And it states that there is no action. There is no action. No non trivial action. Okay, so, so every action has finite image. So gamma can only act by a, by a finite group, through a finite group. Right. So the statement it, is that if you have a, a, an action on a, a manifold of dimension lower than n minus two in this circumstance. Yes. Then every every alpha action has so alpha can have yeah the alpha of gamma is a finite set. Nice. In, in a different morphism group. In dimension n, you have this standard action. So you have this uh, standard action on Tn. But things start to become irregular here. So you need to do some correction, uh, to, to make some correction to, to, to these two types of two, two actions. actions. There, there, there are two. Two types of non algebraic uh, examples. So, one of them is due to Katok and Lewis. This is by take a standard action and blow up the origin. Two of I don't know two or by what by uh, and re anyway replace the origin by a copy of R P M minus one. So it's a blow up construction, and this was that's a fixed point for the yeah any any fixed point all countably many fixed yeah points etc. Um, this um, find that many are countable anyway yeah but. Uh, um, and the other example is due to Fisher and Melnick. And uh, this is new, this is just, just this year, 22. And I, I actually learned about it uh, here in Stony Brook at a conference at uh, the Simon Center a few months ago. It's, it's brand new. And it's, it's a more complicated type of families. It's, it's, um, they let g act on something of this type, g times an interval, then divided by q, where q is the group. Let's remember this group, it will be important for us. Q is, this is, so it, it's missing these, these coordinates in SLIN. Okay, then, but then q is a subgroup of g. g mod q has m minus one dimensions, then they also have i, and uh, so Q X on G by right translation. And G is SL in R. G is SL in R. G is SL in this case. Yeah. Right translation. And Q X on the interval I uh, through a vector field. Because Q has a character, Q has a group morphism into R, so which is, you can read it out from, from the coordinate here. And you can uh, use that value to, to, to control the speed along a vector field. Okay, that's, that's another type of actions. So these two kind of actions, they are not completely algebraic. So you, you see that things are not 100% uh, are, are not regular starting dimension A. And what I want to talk about today is the in dimension n minus one. That's the first non-trivial dimension with non-trivial actions. And the phenomenon is that, unlike in the lower dimensions, there are non-trivial actions, but unlike in dimension n, you don't see 
uh, these content on posts, and every action is, is rigid, is, is algebraic. So for uh, a general semi-simple Lie group, would the n, my, n would here be replaced by the dimension of the lowest non-trivial irreducible representation? Not the reducible representation. It's uh, by the quotient of the largest uh, max. By, by, it's a quotient of the maximal parabolic group. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a it's a smallest projective variety. Yeah. Um, that's a critical knowledge. Yes. Uh, okay. Only only for split simple cases. When, when, when a group is not as split, uh, we don't completely know yet. But, yeah. um, in dimension m minus one, you probably see that there is an action. The action is this g act on g mod q. So S L N R acts on S L N R mod Q, which has another name that is the productive space. It has M minus one. And the theorem today is that this is the only action. Smoothly, this is the only action. So if gamma acts on manifold in dimension m minus one with regularity c1 plus epsilon and uh, where gamma is lattice in SLML. Then um, after restricting to a finite Finite index group. Alpha is smoothly conjugate to standard action on this space or the sphere. Which is essentially the same, which is double cover. Well, you say it's whatever regularity you get, C1 plus alpha or whatever? Yeah. So yeah. it's not, not smoothly, but I mean, well, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that, yeah, OK, yeah, 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 so sorry, yeah, yes, 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 this standard detection is just a standard detection of a certain R point, Rn, and just in motion e. into the projective space. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's all. That's all. OK. Um, I mean, you, you, don't, you don't need to assume that M is compact or anything. Oh, oh, oh of course. Oh, sorry. Yes, com it's a compact manifold. Compact, smooth manifold. We need a compact. We, we, we need a compact because it's a at least it's going to be a measure theoretical technique be a technique here. We need some measure mu, so we need to be compact to to to, to get some measure to get some mu and measure to take it a bit. Okay. Uh, I should have mentioned an early route. Just let me mention an early route. This is by uh, Gordon Yakens Bati. This it's of similar flavor, but the condition is not on the on the dimension. Classification if M, this is any dimension, any dimension, is a smooth factor. of a flag variety, then plus some, some contracting conditions. Let me. 
but in that case, they yeah they they, they had some some result uh, telling that the, in, in that case M itself is also a project variety. It's, it's uh, not not only a smooth factor; it's an algebraic factor, homogeneous factor. Um, Sorry, I don't quite understand. This result of Spatzier, what is his name? Uh, Gordonik. Gordonik. What is the actual statement? Oh, the, the actual statement is if m, okay, if alpha, alpha acting m is is a smooth factor of action, okay, sorry, of standard action on a flag variety g mod p, then this is some g mod q. Oh, I see. It itself is is a yeah is algebra uh, algebra quotient, not only. And that yeah. was for any semi-simple linker? Uh, probably I I Maybe. don't exactly Maybe. remember. Yeah yeah, mm, yeah I, I don't exactly remember the exact conditions. But but uh, but uh, high rank definitely. You need you always need to high, assume high rank. At least, two. But at least two. At least two. Otherwise yeah things won't work. Oh yes, of course. Here I need to say that M is greater than equal to three. We must without. And the method, uh, there are three main main steps of the of the method. Um, but maybe I will tell you the most about the the first step. The first step is a criterion for invariant measures. If you want to prove something like this or prove that the action is trivial, you want to make use of the derivative co-cycle, how, how the derivative looks like at one point. And there is a way to classify a derivative, which is the Zimmer co-cycle simplicity I wrote here. Uh, a few minutes ago, and to 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 have the cosine cosine prejudice, you need a, a measure mu that is invariant in the gamma. And how do you get such a measure mu? So, hope to uh, hope use the mer cosine cosine prejudice. To linearize the derivative, then you know how it acts locally. But this only works over gamma invariant measures. Do we always have gamma interval measures? No, not necessarily, because gamma is not an amenable group. Um, there are such, they not always have such a measure. Reason is gamma is not amenable. Amenable means that you are allowed to take average over, over gamma. No averaging operator. For instance, if you take the sum, let's say 2 n plus 1 to n, so it is an averaging over z. So when you have a z action, it's easy to get z invariant measures. But for, for gamma, this is not the case because it's growing exponentially fast and the boundary is very large. Now, what, maybe let's, since it's hopeless to make it invariant in the every, everybody in gamma, maybe let's at least make it invariant in the sum members of gamma. 
But for that, it would be easier to work with G rather than gamma because gamma is a bit, okay, this gamma may be okay, but in general, a lattice is a bit uh, mysterious. And inside G, there is a very nice subgroup that is amenable, that is a triangular group, which is solvable. Solvable, group, solvable groups are, are amenable. Okay, first, um, let's, uh, okay, for now, let's pretend, let's pretend for a second. For the moment, G has had uh, an averaging operator. Which is not true, which is not true. Because a group G is not amenable either. But let, let's pretend for a second that you can do that. Then this will give us a gamma invent measure. How do we do that? We can take the group, take the manifold, take the product, and quotient out by gamma, and let this new manifold be, uh, uh, be called M tilde. And this quotient is given by the following relation. A point, a pair in G cross M, if these two, let it be equivalent to G gamma inverse and alpha gamma X. And after you do that, the quotient will be a bundle where the base is the quotient Gmo gamma, which as we know have by assumption it has a, has a finite volume. And the fiber is a copy of M. So this is M, M bundle over Gmo gamma and gamma acts on the bundles, on the, on the fibers by alpha. So, okay. Uh, yeah, that's a suspension space. This is called suspension. Okay, uh, so this is, so G acts on M tilde by left translation. Because that's a, that's a right quotient and we can act from left by, by G. And for, for this, so the restriction of alpha tilde, so alpha tilde restricted to gamma acts on the, the fibers by, by, by alpha. Okay, so but the point of the suspension is that we upgraded the, uh, the action by gamma to the action by G, which is easier to work with. Now, it's, now we can uh, take average over G which will give us a G right measure mu tilde. Okay. Then it's conditional of mu tilde on uh, the identity fiber is gamma invariant. Okay. But now this is not true. We cannot do that. Because even G is not amenable. But G is not amenable. So there's no averaging. Let's average over P instead, where P is this up triangular group inside G. It's a solvable and amenable. It says it's amenable, solvable, so amenable. This will give us a p-invariant 
probability measure you killed them. Now, what can we do with, with mu tilde? Um, when is mu tilde g invariant? Maybe we are lucky and it's g invariant, then we can get a gamma invariant, measure mu, then we can run the Zimmer argument to linearize. But it's not always g invariant. So if so, we can we can run Zimmer's cosine super rigidity. Super rigidity. I will give you two examples, a good example and a bad example. The good example is when uh, the mu tilde is G invariant. So for example, the gamma is acting on SLNZ, acting on TN, and with the standard action. Then, uh, then the volume is gamma event volume and is G event volume on the suspension. And a bad example is the example that we have here, which is which should be expected because in this dimension there are no representations, so you should not expect it to be G event. Um, is uh, SL and R, so it is, okay, both G and gamma, act on M equals G mod Q. And inside G mod Q, the North Pole is, G mod Q is just RP minus M minus one, and the North Pole is P invariant, but, so the dark mass set, P variant, but not G variant. And you just put a direct mass at the North Pole, then it's, it's like that. And why, 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 why so different? It turns out that difference lies in the, the upper exponents of these actions. So for this, I need to introduce some, some background. So take X tilde from the suspension M tilde, and the fiber is M at X tilde. Then take the fiber. The fiber will be uh, decomposed into, so, and this is for mu tilde almost every point. The, the tangent space of the fiber, the along the fiber, can be decomposed into e to the chi i, and each chi i, so this is a sub-bundle, and this sub-bundle is uh, for uh, A in the Lie algebra of capital A, so capital A is a diagonal subgroup, uh, the group is A, expand, rescales, uh, e to the chi i, uh, roughly, at rate uh, e to the t times chi i of a, then plus little o of t. So the fiber, the, the, the fiber bundle can be decomposed and this exponent is the rate 
of, at which the diagonal group rescales the, the directions, the, the exponential speed. And what's this chi i? Because this is Rm minus one. This Lie, Lie algebra is, and the chi i is in the dual of a star, which is just Rm minus one star. So the, the, these are vectors. And in this case, um, and in, this is representation theory notation, and for, uh, and A is, okay, the, 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 the algebra of A is uh, T1, T2, T3, and this, such that T1 plus T2 plus T3 is zero. Okay, I'm doing N equals three. And let Li is, Li is a uh, Li of this, this thing is Ti. And write Li from, uh, write I is L star. So, so this, these are the coordinates of this, 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 large, this vector space. And on, the, on that we define three linear, vector, uh, three vector, uh, linear functionals, L1, L2, and L3. And in this case, in, in a good example, the Lyapunov exponents, fiber Lyapunov exponents, are L1, L2, and L3. In the bad example, the fiber Lyapunov exponents are L1 minus L2 and L1 minus L2. Now the criterion says this is good and this is bad. And why is the downstairs case bad? Because these Lyapunov exponents, they are the roots of the group. They come from the roots of the group. They are not, turns out these are not Lyapunov exponents. They are not appearing on, not only just in the fiber, they also appear in the base. Similarly, define exponents in the base, G mod gamma. And turns out these, these are Li minus Lj in this case. And the criterion is also by the three of us, says that if fiber exponents and base exponents are not proportional to each other, then the P invariant measure mu tilde is G invariant. I can't read from here. What are the two things that are not supposed to be proportional to each other? The, the fiber exponents and the base exponents. So the fiber exponents are supposed to be different from the roots of the Lie group. The, the base exponents are just the roots of the, the Lie group. Uh, their proportional classes don't overlap. Up to positive proportionality, they don't overlap. Now, there are two cases. Okay, if that's G invariant, then the proof, so following Brown Fisher Hattado. If it's, okay, if every P invariant measure mu tilde is G invariant, then we follow in this, we can show that actually true. If not, then you can ask what happened. 
there is something keeping this from, from, from happening, then there must be, there are, uh, base exponents lambda that appear in the fiber. And each base exponent correspond to a subgroup G, uh, U lambda inside G. This is a unipotent. A lambda, let's say, this is Li minus Lj, unipotent group. Subgroup in G at Ij. Then the criterion, or the proof of the criterion, proof of a criterion, actually says mu tilde is invariant under u lambda for each lambda that is not uh, resonant to the fiber. We call this two, two fiber exponents. Now, the dimension is at most m minus one. So we are missing m minus one dimensions. Since dimension of this is m minus one, This shows for at most m minus one u lambdas, u lambda doesn't preserve u tilde. In other words, the stabilizer inside the G of mu tilde, the dimension of this group, which we call Q, is at least dimension of G minus M minus one. And this Q, there's only one possibility, that is this group. This is how the, the RPM minus one start to show up. So, or the, 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 the other one, there's a, how do I draw it? A, yeah, we're missing this, or this group. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, well, I think I'm out of time, so I will just mention the next two steps very, 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 very fast. So this is the first step, that it's, the, the measure mu is stabilized by a group Q like this. Okay, then step two is that there are local charts at x tilde along m. Okay, and there is for each e lambda by u lambda. So along m, there are only m minus one dimensions. And along E lambda, there is, this is exactly parameterized by U lambda. So, so, so the proof is that if you look at the measure along E lambda, and it will be, so you look at the, the, the measure conditioned to the, to the joint Lyapunov space, U lambda, E lambda, there will be a smooth curve. So there is a graph of U lambda into E lambda. So, there, 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 so along M, so you locally parameterize every direction. There are m minus one directions. So you parameterize all, all the directions. Therefore, locally, the coordinates look exactly like this group, which we call v. 
So M locally looks like V. And step number three is to glue these local charts together. Step three is that these local charts, in local chart maps, they are equivalent in the three groups in different senses, in the V, in the Q, and in the lambda. Why it is uh, equivalent in the Q? Because the, the measure is Q invariant. It's equivalent in the gamma because there was a gamma quotient of on the right. It's equivalent in the V. A priori, it's only locally, because, but there, there's a group A that expands V, so you can extend the, the local charts to a global chart on the entire V. So, so all these would allow you to glue the, the charts together. And in this North Pole, South Pole picture, and the local charts will be, one local chart will look like that around the North Pole, and then take another local chart near the South Pole, and you prove that along these, in the, in the overlapping parts, because of these equivalence, they should, they should coincide. And the point is that you only need finite and many such points to glue them together. Okay. And uh, yeah, that's a strategy of the proof. I think I would stop here. Thank you very much.